Good evening, church family. Happy Wednesday to you. Glad that you are here. Wednesday nights, we've been walking through uh, what Jesus demands from the world. I've been serving for you a really good book by that title written by John Piper. And we've just been walking through because of Really, it's simplistic style to just pause and to chew for just a moment on the, these commands that Christ gives and then to examine our lives by it, right? Uh, and so this evening, we're going to look at the next command, and that is Christ's command that we would abide in him, right? That we would abide in him. We know this, we're, we're quite familiar, particularly with John chapter 15. I'm going to share some of these verses with you, uh, but it's not just in John 15 where Christ issues this continual command to each of us. He commands us, abide in him. So listen, John 15, 4, abide in me and I in you as a bra- the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. Now, just below that same passage here in John uh, 15, verse 9, he says, just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. Okay, so hold on to that because we're going to talk for a moment about these commands. Uh, So here, It's not just abide in me. That's the analogy. Here he says, abide in his love. But elsewhere, and just previous to this, in John chapter 8, Jesus says this. So Jesus was saying to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. So here, Jesus commands this abiding to be in his word. All right, so let's flesh this out for uh, just a moment. Uh, What does it mean? When Jesus commands us to abide in him, we know that this this is a call of continual obedience. This is something that you and I as Christians are called to do. In fact, it's... As it unfleshes, it's supposed to be a moment by moment connection to him, okay? Uh, That to be his disciple is to abide in him. That is part of following after him. This word abide, uh, it may sound uh, kind of spiritual or some sort. We're going to unpack that for a moment. Uh, It isn't. It is actually an ordinary word that also just means to stay with, to continue, to dwell. Okay? That's what the word abide means. Okay? Stay with me. Continue with me. Dwell with me. Does that make sense? Now, let's think about, so this is in the the context of John 15, where there's this incredible analogy that Jesus is using. He says, I am the vine, like a grapevine, and you are the branches. Now, the power of the analogy, the purpose of that analogy is to make this point, That when you are connected to the vine, you will bear fruit, right? Because that's what being connected to the vine does. Any uh, branch that is connected to a good vine bears fruit. So the power to live a fruit-filled life which the Bible would tell us is is part of the evidence of being a Christian, is that the Spirit of God is in you and there will be fruit throughout your life. But that power comes not from yourself. It's, It's so silly to think that you by yourself could produce any good fruit. That's as silly as thinking a branch not connected to the vine, could bear grapes on its own. 
So we catch that analogy. That's the power of the analogy. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So here's the command, right? That a moment by moment, a continual, stay with me, continue with me, dwell with me in any and every circumstance is uh, how we are to bear fruit, okay? So now we begin to ask the question, well, practically, what does this look like? I, I need to pause here. Again, in harbor on, you went one slide, you can go back one slide. I want to harbor on this, this one point because it's so fundamental to the gospel, okay? And that is, you can't bear fruit on your own. And guess what? You can't bear fruit by obeying the command to bear fruit. Do you see how silly that is? You can't say to the branch, bear fruit. It doesn't unless it's connected to the vine. So the reason this is important and as I unfold, it's not by, yes, you are commanded to be obedient and to follow after Christ, but you must understand that the power to actually obey and to actually bear fruit does not come from the law, does not come from the command to do so. It only comes from the source, which we will see is the gospel. It is Jesus himself. He is the source. And when you are connected to him, you will obey and be obedient and bear fruit. Okay. That's really key. Very important. That's where the analogy uh, becomes fundamental. Now let's ask the practical question. Well, what does this mean practically to abide in him? Remember I showed those two verses that is, he says to abide in his love. Okay. Let's look at that one first to abide in his love. What does this mean for us? Well, sometimes it's easy to understand something by understanding the opposite, okay? So think of the opposite. What would it mean to not abide in Jesus's love? Well, that would mean as we come face to face with whatever circumstances that have come against us, we stop believing that Jesus loves us. We stop believing that he genuinely cares for us as his own, right? We all face circumstances and doubt and we get confused at times. And what the enemy whispers to us is you are no longer his. Look at you. You're not obeying. You're not doing anything you're supposed to do. God doesn't call you his own. He doesn't love you, right? We, we get so circumstantial with our love. We're like, oh, we went to church today. I guess Jesus loves me today. Oh, you, you skipped and you played hooky. I guess he doesn't love you. Okay. So that's what it means to miss it. So then the opposite is there, right? When Jesus says, abide in my love, he means continue to believe moment by moment that we are loved. That is that when you see the gospel unfold and when you believe it and you're like the God of the universe has sent his son and his son became my sin. He died on the cross out of love to save me. He did all of that for me. Yes. While you were a sinner. Yes. Okay. Then it's that moment by moment believing he loves me. I believe that. That's what it means. This is what it means to abide, okay? To continue to believe that. And then second one, okay? Jesus said, abide in my word, all right? I don't have time to uh, unfold this, but rather very quickly for you. The context here where he says, uh, abide in my word and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. When you unfold that, really your options here, for what it means to abide in Jesus's word is either to follow all his commands. And then if I follow all of his commands, I will be abiding in him. And that will 
uh, that will, uh, uh, that's how I'll abide in him is just by following his commands. That is not what he is getting at here. That is not what it means to abide. That is actually, as I said before, that is the fruit. The ability to abide and to walk and to chase after him is the fruit. That obedience is the fruit of actually being connected to the gospel. What this means to abide in his word means moment by moment, believing that, uh, that God's word, that God has revealed himself fully and extensively in his son and that his son is working for you, right? The Bible is filled with promises towards you of who he says you are and that he is working all things out for your good, okay? So the question is, is like, do you believe that word as circumstances come? We doubt, right? As, as uh, you lose your job, as there's a death or an illness of a loved one, right? Every one of us is just a moment away from being punched in the gut and being filled with confusion and doubt and having all of this stuff swirl around in our mind, okay? Of all of the circumstances, but what it means to abide is to believe as those circumstances and those waves come against us to believe he loves me. He loves me. You can doubt it in the circumstances and in the confusion of life. This is why the cross is the marker in the ground. This is why the cross is there that you can always look back and realize he died on the cross. He loves me. Okay. And he has promises for me. He calls me his own. He has said he is working all things out for my good. Okay, he, he says nothing is wasted in my life, that he is using this to shape me into the image of Jesus and to move me through life. And no matter what comes against me, I am always victorious. Even death, I am victorious in death. Nothing can come against me because I am his. Okay, so it's he loves me and he has promises for me. That's what it means to abide in his love and to abide in his word. You see that? So this is what we're called to do. And I know it's hard. Look, I got off the phone with one of my very best friends who's going through something. He got one of those gut punches, one of those sucker punches in life. And you just begin to ask the question as evil comes against you and you, you really start to doubt and you, and you wrestle with those things. And then for me as his friend was just to, to take this right here and to say, remember who God is. God loves you and he saved you. He's revealed himself to you. And he has promised in this, that even this, he will cause it to work out for your good. That's what it means to abide in him, abide in him on a moment by moment basis. So you can wake up every morning. You want to do something really practical. You wake up every morning and you say this, God, I believe that you love me today because you gave your son for me. I believe that regardless of how I feel throughout the day, I believe that you love me and I believe your promises are true that you have revealed yourself and your promises are true towards me so that you will work all things out for my good. I want to abide in you today. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Jesus, you are good. You are the vine. You are the one that we attach to. You are the giver of life. You have come so that we would have life and have it to the full, have it abundantly. And you are glorified when we bear much fruit for the glory of your name. And we bear fruit by latching onto you and remembering that it is your love and that it is your promises and that you are in control. And that attachment causes us to be able to overcome any and every circumstances in our life. It's that attachment that the Holy Spirit that indwells uses us to be filled with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all the fruit of the spirit to display you fruit for the glory of your name, uh, 
and so much better life, abundant life in us. We thank you for this, Jesus. We pray all of this in your name. Amen. All right. God bless you guys.